How's it going everybody? Texas Man here. I hope you guys are all having a fabulous day. Give this video a thumbs up if you guys really enjoyed. Subscribe if you guys haven't already. Also do me the biggest favor of all. Hit the bell notification button and select all for all notifications. You guys want to have future videos or streams here on my channel. Also head over to Twitch and follow me at Douglas447 with a capital D. And in this video we're going to be continuing on reading through my book series. We are of course going to be Continuing on reading through Delta Force. This is going to be part five. If you guys haven't had to check out parts one through four, make sure you guys check out those videos before you continue on in this video so you guys can uh, be completely caught up. And uh, like I said, I believe in part four, my goal is I'm going to be dividing this book into 12 parts. Yes, I know that seems like a lot of videos and a lot of, a lot of parts that I'm dividing this book up into, but this book is extremely long. With that out of the way, let's continue on. We're going to be continuing on in uh, chapter two, Spiders, on page 26. Hope you guys enjoy. Chapter two, Spiders. In a flash of a second, Unifor and Ashbecka suddenly vanished from New Heaven and found themselves on a planet they had only heard about, yet had never visited. Comfortorting, the planet was what the team had heard of it being. Tropical trees, warm sandy beaches, and cool waters was the terrain of the planet. The planet was truly a beach paradise planet, with peaceful sea creatures and land animals as well. I wonder what happened, said Douglas, as do I. However, I'm getting the impression that something transported us here for a reason, said Ashbecka. Let's find a way off this beach and find out what has occurred, said Douglas. <clears throat> Andrew and Amanda Prime beamed into Comfortorting's inland forest and watched the portal in the sky, which they came through, vanish. What is the plan now that we are back in the time on the planet Comfortorting with no way of leaving this planet, asked Amanda. My dear, I have planned for this day before we were married. I chose certain people and objects from, from different times and areas of the universe to help us, said Andrew. What do you mean, asked Amanda. For example, President Jeremy, Officer Raz, and your sister Cedar should have been beamed here with us, if alive. I fear that the ones that attacked that attacked Delta Mega and destroyed the planet killed them and came with us in the time portal, said Andrew. Go on about who and what is going to help us, said Amanda. I chose to bring Unit 4, Ashbecka, and an old Unit 4 ship here to help us with our mission, said Andrew. You brought the famous Unit 4 and Ashbecka from the Corps to assist us? asked Amanda. Yes, and we need to find them quickly, along with the time machine and your super weapon, said Andrew. A bright blue light flashed, and Nikolai and his entire army suddenly looked around to see themselves on the planet Task for 12, with no one else alive, living in the city. What just occurred? asked Nathan. I'm not completely sure at the moment. However, I think we have traveled back in time before Task for 12 was inhabited by humans, replied Nikolai. My lord, all of our ships and fighters successfully came through the strange portal with us, said General Evan Piper. So I still have my 5,000 demon army to locate the superweapon. And now the time machine as well, my general, asked Nikolai. Yes, my lord, answered the human general. Dad, yelled Nathan. Nikolai and Evan looked, to, looked at Nathan. Turn, I'm sorry, Nikolai and Evan turned to look at Nathan, turned from the age of 11 to 21. What is wrong with me? asked Nathan. Nothing is wrong with my son. This rapid change in age could be the result of your ability to understand and have greater powers than me faster, replied Nikolai. With what his father just spoke, Nathan realized Nikolai basically said he was stronger than his father. While Andrew and Amanda walked closer towards the five lightsaber-armed Corps members, Unit 4 and Ashbecka also began walking inland. Within a few minutes, the Primes and the members of the Corps were face-to-face -face with each other. "'Who are you, and what do you want?' asked Douglas. "'I am Andrew, and this is my wife Amanda,' replied Andrew. "'Whose side are you on, and what sector and planet are you from?' asked Douglas. "'We are not on a side in the universe. We're from Sector 2, Uncharted Space,' And planet Delta Mega, replied Amanda. Unit 4 and Ash realized who they were talking to and were in shock to see Prines on Confitorating. 
You probably want to know who the five of us are with lightsabers attached to our belts, said Ash. Yes, I would. However, I already know who you five are, answered Andrew. The team of five wondered if Andrew really knew who they were and tested the two primes' knowledge with one statement. If what you say is true, then prove it, said Douglas. Well, you must be Ash Becca with the blue lightsaber and the look of a 4,439-year-old man. You also have a blue lightsaber and not and are not as old as ass, so you must be Dave Armstrong. You're a female with a purple lightsaber, making you Deborah Armstrong. You must be Devin Armstrong with the famous golden lightsaber, which was found on the planet Thin Line to defeat Satan for the second time. Lastly, you must be Douglas Armstrong with the green lightsaber and the mouth to be the leader of Unit 4 and commander of this little squad, said Andrew. Unit 4 and Ash were stunned at the information Andrew had on the five people standing in front of him. Since you know so much about us, can you explain how we traveled from New Heaven to Comfortorting and through an asteroid belt also in less than one second? asked Douglas. I can, because I made it happen, replied Andrew. What are you talking about? asked Evan. After my government received a reply back from the Corps stating the request sent had become official terms between the Corps and the Primes, my wife and I planned something no one could have ever imagined. I invented a time machine with a portal while Amanda constructed a super weapon, said Andrew. What was the purpose in these devices, asked Dave. So I could choose to look to people and objects to travel through time to prevent the annihilation of Delta Omega, answered Andrew. Why would you do something that defies your government's rules, asked Deborah. I built a time machine to rewrite history so President Jeremy would not send the messages to God to no longer be part of the Corps. And so those who destroyed Delta Omega would never think about conquering the planet, said Andrew. Why the construction of the superweapon, then? asked Dave. I built it to kill those who destroyed our home planet, Delta Omega, answered Amanda. So where are the two devices? asked Douglas. That is what I've been trying to find out for the past half an hour, replied Andrew. If we don't locate the devices, our mission of changing the future won't matter if any of us are still in the same time frame when the year turns 4,440, said Andrew. What will happen if we don't return to 4,440 before completing the mission, asked Ash. The timeline will continue onwards after I activate the time machine, causing the universe to remain in a loop from 3,350 to 4,440, replied Andrew. How do you know what year it is, asked Evan. Because I set the time machine for everyone and everything to travel to that year, replied Andrew. Why? What is so special about 3,350, asked Dave. It is a few years after the second defeat of Satan, and the entire Corps won't be able to help us because they are observing the creation of Delta Omega in Sector 2, replied Andrew. Nice timing, commented Deborah. What happens now? asked Douglas. We will leave here now and find an object to leave this planet, said Andrew. May Unifor and I come with you and form a new team? asked Ash. Yes, you may. However, what would we, the seven of us, be known as during our mission? replied Andrew. I was thinking about something like Delta Force, replied Ash. Not bad at all for a team of seven people searching out the universe to save it and to save it for a short time. I mean, it's not like anyone's going to even remember us like Unit 4, said Dave, in a sarcastic tone. I'm not sure what that means, Dad. However, I think it is a great name for us, replied Devin. As of this day, Douglas, Dave, Devin, and Deborah Armstrong, Ash Becca, Andrew, and Amanda Prime will be known as Delta Force. Our mission is simple. Find a time machine and a super weapon while, alerting, while altering the events of the future. Let us hope that those who destroyed Delta Omega do not attempt to hunt us down while we complete the mission, said Douglas. The event that Andrew never believed could or would ever occur, occurred anyway. He and his wife were part of a team with the famous Unifor and Ash Becca, known as Delta Force. So who's going to be the leader of Delta Force, asked Ash. After minutes of voting, a decision was made of who was to be the team's leader. The result was the following. Douglas would be the first in command, since he was Unifor's leader, and second commander of the entire Corps army, under God. Andrew would be in second command, since he knew about the time machine and superweapon. 
Ashbeka would be the third in command because of his past life from battling so many evil villains. Finally, Devon would be the fourth leader if ever needed, since he was the one that killed Satan during the last war against evil. Douglas, we need to locate the object I spoke of earlier so we can leave this planet immediately, said Andrew. Lead the way then, said Douglas. Delta Force left the current position and headed into the forest dark areas to locate an object Andrew transported through the portal. My lord, all of our troops are on board ships, like us, and we have learned some unbelievable news, said General Evan Piper. What is the situation? Said N asked Nikolai. The blast from the portal on the planet Delta Omega seems to have transported us back in time to the year 3350, said the human general. Really? asked Nathan. Why would the Primes travel back in time? asked Nikolai. Perhaps to change the events of the future, such as the destruction of Delta Omega, said the general. This may work in our favor, said Nikolai. How so, Dad? asked Nathan. The Core does have control of the planet Earth 2. However, the Core's main fleet is located in Sector 2, where New Heaven and New Earth are located, said Nikolai. What is your point? asked Nathan. Earth 2 is no longer the Core's main stronghold. That means hardly anything is going to be protecting it, said Nikolai. Oh, I get it now. You want to assault the human homeworld, said Nathan. That is correct, my son, said Nikolai. All armed ships, this is General Evan Piper. Make final preparations to leave Tasper 12's atmosphere and head for the planet New Earth to take it over, said the general. The armed fleet left Tasper 12 and headed for the human homeworld to annihilate it, just as they did the planet. Delta Omega. As Delta Force continued to journey further into Comfort Harding's Dark Forest, they wondered when they would locate the object Andrew was leading them to. Finally, after two hours of continuous walking, the squad of humans arrived at a familiar site, the first spaceship used by the Unit 14 during the war against the Arc Trooper Army, the Eta 7 T-14. What is this ship doing here, especially since it was destroyed during the Galaxy War over 2,000 years ago, asked Devon. I transported it here from the past, when Unifor was not using it on a mission, so we could travel the universe to stop the future events of evil from occurring, replied Andrew. Andrew, I got a little lost of how you plan to prevent your government from stopping the messages from being sent and coming back as terms between the Core and the Primes, said Douglas. Just us traveling through time has changed the future already. When we return to our time, things will be happening that would have not happened if I did not activate the time machine and nothing went through the portal. All that remains for us to do is locate the time machine and the super weapon and return to 4,440, said Andrew. Sounds easy, said Dave. This mission would be. However, it may not be easy if those who destroyed Delta Omega traveled through the portal with us and tried to obtain the devices to make sure they can control time and destroy other planets without anyone to stop them, replied Andrew. Delta Force entered the NS-7 T-14 through a sliding door, walked towards the ship's armory, and looked at the weapons scattered everywhere. There were uncountable amounts of ammunition clips, dozens of blaster rifles, some with markings of the first Unit 14 that battled Vader and Morg, and even a 96R P-30 rocket launcher. It was almost like heaven to Devon to see all of this awesome stuff, since he was one who enjoyed guns, missiles, and bombs the most. Every Delta Force member grabbed a blaster and placed dozens of ammunition clips around their belts, and one inside of their weapon. Douglas also ordered Devon to grab the 96R P-30 rocket launcher, which turns objects into dust like a death gun, and had his brother have the responsibility to use it, if the team ran into trouble. Delta Force left the armory, walked through a series of hallways, and found the command bridge to the ship. The bridge design was amazing and appeared to be nearly identical to that of the Unifor's previous ship, the ESV-64. A solid and shielded glass window was in front, a command chair with speakers to communicate throughout the war ship, the war class ship, and a button to talk with people on other ships as well was part of the design. Chairs were scattered on the bridge, with each serving a different purpose. One chair controlled the ship's pilot controls, another shields and weapons, 
another for an advisor, and other chairs had nothing and were meant for passengers that were rescued during a mission. Every member of the team took their certain seats and prepared for their leader to order for takeoff. Andrew, where to so we can return to 4,440, asked Douglas. We need to travel to Dismander, because I know it holds a clue to the location's devices, said Andrew. You can't be serious that we have to travel to that planet, commented Devin. What's wrong with the planet Dismander, asked Deborah. It is home to the supernova spiders, replied Dave. Well, I for one do not want to travel there, said Deborah, disliking spiders, period, no matter what type they were. I'm sorry. However, it is the only way to not have to travel every planet and waste time to complete our mission, said Andrew. Devin, take us to the planet Dismander, ordered Douglas. Two bad ships do not have energy engines 2,000 years ago, replied Dave. It doesn't matter. Once those spiders start chasing us, once we land on the planet, said Deborah. The NS-7 T-14 took off from the beach paradise planet Comfortorting and headed for the home planet of the supernova spiders, Dismander. My lord, our deep space... Deep, deep space... Blah, 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 blah. My lord, Nikolai, our deep space radar has detected a core ship called the NS-7 T-14 headed for the planet Dismander, said General Evan Piper. Impossible. The NS-7 T-14 is a 2,000-year-old ship that was destroyed during the Galaxy War, said Nikolai. We thought it was also, Dad. However, we can prove it, said Nathan. How, my son, asked Nikolai. I used my powers and saw who was on the ship and learned that Ash Becca, Unit 4, and the two Primes are on it, said Nathan. I'm trusting you, my son. General, have the fleet change course from attacking Earth 2 for Dismander. I would rather spend this opportunity killing Unit 4 and Ash Becca for all the problems they have caused in preventing evil from ruling the universe, said Nikolai. The armed fleet changed their course and headed for Dismander. Soon, the two forces would clash for the first time, and it would not end well. We have arrived at Dismander, said Devon. All right, now what do we do, asked Douglas. Just land this ship and everything will unfold as it needs to, replied Andrew. Devon landed the NS-7 T-14 on the ice rock, gray mountains, and caves-like planet. Delta Force left the command bridge, walked outside of the ship, onto the icy ground, while all the members wondering while all the members wondered where the spiders were hiding. Everyone stay alert and have your blaster rifles prepared to blast any spiders that attempt to attack us, said Douglas. The team traveled away from the NS-7 T-14 and towards a mountain range nearby with mountains and caves, which were all frozen and colored dark blue. So, Andrew, what is this clue we're looking for? asked Douglas. We're not looking for a clue, but a person with a clue to the devices, replied Andrew. Who? You will see once we enter that cave up ahead, replied Andrew. Devin, being the person making sure nothing attacked the team from behind, looked around to see nothing with eight legs. I'm sorry, to see something with eight legs dash quickly from one part of the forest to the other. Everyone stop! The group stopped on the track that cut through the middle of the forest, which led to the mountains and caves, and looked around at the blue frozen trees to see eight-legged creatures running around. Delta Force formed a circle and aimed their blaster rifles, guns that can shoot red bullets but put, that put holes through their targets, at the things that were dashing around. The creatures dashed out of hiding and showed themselves to the team as small spiders. Suddenly, one of the spiders fired a ball towards the group. The members all ducked and watched as the ball traveled into a tree and melted a hole. These supernova spiders, I think, have the ability to shoot blue acid balls out of their mouth and not just use their sharp teeth to kill us, said Ash. As Delta Force watched the supernova spiders continue to creep towards the group, Douglas prepared to give the order to have fun blasting the ugly monsters. Let them have it, ordered Douglas. As fast as a bullet comes out of a chamber, the seven members began blasting the dozens of spiders with their rifles. We can't stay here much longer, Douglas. We're going to run out of ammunition in a few minutes with all these spiders coming with no end, said Devin. Douglas looked around the area, wondering what to do so he and the team he was leading would not die at the hands of these spiders. Douglas looked down the pathway they were heading to see a small cave 
and thought in his head that the cave would help the team hide. Everyone, run into the cave, yelled Douglas. Delta Force continued to fire at the spiders while racing into the cave. Amanda, Andrew, and Deborah raced into the cave while Douglas stood by the entrance to guard it and watched Dave, Devon, and Ash run towards him. Quickly, yelled Douglas, seeing the dozens of spiders chasing the three members of Delta Force. Douglas began to open fire on the spiders since they were so close and watched as Dave, Devon, and Ash entered the small entrance of the cave. Douglas dashed into the small entrance of the cave and he and his father rolled several boulders in front of the entrance to halt the monsters from advancing. The sound of the spiders trying to break through the rocks started and ceased after 30 seconds. The monsters traveled away and the threat of the dangerous monsters was over for the time being. Sure hope the NS7T14 is still in one piece when we get back to it, said Deborah. Let's find this clue and get off this rock, said Douglas, looking directly at Andrew. Welcome to my hideout, said a voice. Delta Force quickly turned around in the cave and aimed their blaster rifles at an odd structure. Who's there? asked Douglas. The structure suddenly moved from its still position in the unlit cave and started walking towards a large pile of wooden sticks. Suddenly, a fireball blasted from the palms of the person towards the pile of wood. The wood began to burn, and the appearance of the person in the cave became clear. Everyone, lower your weapons, said Andrew. You know this person, said Douglas. Not really well, yet I brought him here from the future to help us, said Andrew. Douglas nodded his head, and Delta Force lowered and put away their weapons. The person waved his hands around, stating for the seven people to come join him around his campfire and to have a conversation with him. Delta Force approached the man with caution and sat down with the stranger, wondering what Andrew had brought this elderly person back in time for. Hello, my name uh, my, my name uh, blah, 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 blah. Hello, my name is Toa Ray Williams, brother of Satan and uncle of Nikolai Sith, said the odd man. We are Delta Force, said Douglas, before everyone introduced themselves to Ray. Thank you for sending me back in time, Andrew Prime. Because of you, I will have an easier time obtaining the ruby needed for the Chosen One, said Ray. What is this ruby, and who is the Chosen One, asked Ash. One day you'll know, my friend. In fact, all of you will, said Ray. Ray, we can't stay here in your hideout. We need any clues you may have. On the location of a time machine and super weapon, said Andrew. Clues? asked Ray. Yes, said Douglas, slowly, as if Andrew was speaking in another language. I know where the location of every object is at in this universe. Mine's no man's land, of course, said Ray. Where? asked Andrew. The location of your devices you seek is on the planet Cassando, inside of a supercomputer, answered Ray. Thank you so much for the information, Ray. However, we can't stay any longer, for we must complete our mission fast, said Douglas. I will lead you back to your ship, the NS-7T-14, Delta Force, said Ray. The team was in total shock that Ray knew the name of their ship and the name of their team without anyone informing them. Dad, the fleet has arrived at Planet Dismander, said Nathan. Good work, my son said Nikolai. What would you like me to do, my lord, said General Evan Piper. Prepare another ship for me, my son, and thirty demons to board it to land on this mander. While we are away, you are in charge of the fleet, General Evan. Make sure nothing leaves this planet alive, said Nikolai. Within ten minutes, Nikolai Nathan and thirty demons were on an armed ship with death guns and lightsabers preparing to land on the planet this mander. Delta Force grabbed hold of Ray's right arm and was suddenly teleported out of the cave and only four minutes away from the NS7-T14. How did you light up the wood in the cave and how did you teleport us here? asked Ash. I am a Toa and the last of my kind. I have the power to control fire and water and ability to teleport anywhere, replied Ray. Suddenly the sound of supernova spiders surrounding the group of eight was heard by them all. Run as fast as a cheetah, said Douglas. 
Delta Force and Ray ran towards the ship only to see something unwanted land nearby. A ship with arm markings all over it. Demons, kill everyone you see except for the two Primes. Without the Primes alive, we will not be able to locate the time machine and super weapon quickly, said Nikolai. The 30 demons loaded up their death guns. Nikolai turned on his two red lightsabers. And Nathan turned on his red lightsaber. The group of 32 armed troops dashed out of the armed ship and raced towards, and raced towards the noise of the supernova spiders and the sight of the NS-7 T-14. The spiders continued to chase the group after the eh, the spiders continued to chase after the group of core members and finally arrived at the NS-7 T-14. Douglas, get your team into that ship and get to Cassando, said Ray. What about you and the spiders? asked Deborah in a mother tone. I will hold them off and those evil people that landed that will be here soon with my purple lightsaber, said Ray. Delta Force boarded the NS-7 T-14, and Ray activated his purple lightsaber to battle the incoming supernova spiders. Devin, get us out of here, ordered Douglas. The NS-7 T-14 left the planet Dismander, only to face another threat, an armed fleet. Devin, activate energy engines to travel to Cassando before the fleet attacks us, said Douglas. Devin pressed several buttons at his station on the command bridge, and within seven seconds, the NS-7 T-14 disappeared from sight and was headed for Cassando. And I just realized something. I just created a plot hole in this book. I just realized that by reading this. In, in this paragraph, the NS-7 T-14 has energy engines so they can travel through hyperspace. Um, I'm pretty sure, like, three, four pages ago, Devin commented... On the fact that the NS-7 T-14 is 2,000 years old and doesn't have energy engines. <laughs> I just realized I created a plot hole in my book. That's bad. That's really, really bad. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm not perfect. <laughs> Good thing this won't be made into a movie because that would be the biggest plot hole ever. Oh, okay. Uh, continuing on. <laughs> I just realized that. I'm realizing a pothole. And guess what? I'm not fixing it. Because it's funny. <laughs> yeah, okay. Moving on. Mm. Tola Ray Williams watched as the army of 50 supernova spiders approached his position and the group of 32 armed troops also coming towards him. The spiders leaped into position to land on top of Ray, and within a few seconds, Ray was slashing the spiders with his purple lightsaber. Left and right, up and down, sideways, and more, Ray did, killing every single spider that tried to place its ugly fangs into his body. As Ray continued to battle the spiders, Nikolai, Nith Nikolai Nathan and the 30 demons arrived at his position and watched the man battle for his life. Ray continued to slash the monsters for what seemed like eternity, and finally he had defeated the army of the 50 spiders. It looked to see more things that planned to attack him. Surrender, Uncle Ray, said Nikolai. Why should I? asked Ray. Because if you don't, I will order my troops to kill you, and so will I, said Nikolai. Then give the order, replied Ray. Have at him, said Nikolai. The 30 demons opened, on fire, opened fire on Ray. However... Their target disappeared from sight. Behind you, yelled Nathan. The 30 demons looked behind themselves to see Ray with fireballs in his hands. The demons fired their death guns at Ray, again, at Ray, yet were unable to, I'm sorry, the demons aimed their death guns at Ray again, but were, in, were the demons aimed their death guns at Ray again. Yet were unable to fire their weapons because Ray threw the fireballs and turned the demons on fire. The demons rolled around on the ground. Blah, blah, blah. The demons rolled around on the ground, but were all killed within seconds of being torched. The two Siths ran towards Ray, and the clash began. So who are you, boy? asked Ray. I'm Nikolai's son, replied Nathan. Too bad you will have to die along with your evil father one day, said Ray. We will never, for we are gods, and we will kill the weak gods like you, said Nathan. You have done a great job of poisoning his mind, Nikolai, said Ray. Thank you, Uncle Ray. Now let's finish this once and for all, said Nikolai. The lightsaber dueling continued to ensue for several minutes, and finally the fight was over. Ray attacked Nikolai so fast 
and with such accuracy that both Nikolai... I'm sorry, that Nikolai lost both of his legs. Ray prepared to chop off Nikolai's head, yet was stopped by Nathan's lightsaber. You will not harm my father anymore, said Nathan. Ray changed his plans of whom to attack and began to duel his nephew Nathan. Clean clang, ding, clong, clong, clung, cling, was the noise of the purple and red lightsaber battling each other. After clashing against each other, Ray chopped off Nathan's right hand, the hand with his lightsaber, and watched his nephew fall to the ground. I will not kill you two. I was only here to prevent you from hunting Delta Force, said Ray. Toa Ray Williams looked at Nikolai and Nathan with a heartache that he had. I'm sorry. Toa Ray Williams looked at Nikolai and Nathan with a heartache that he had to do what he had to do to his family and suddenly disappeared from their sights. Nikolai and Nathan Sith, Sith watched as several armed ships landed around their position and saw General Evan Piper approach their position. Do not worry, my lord, I will help you and your son fast, said the general. Nikolai and Nathan were both placed on floating beds, loaded into the leader's armed ship and into the medical bay. After hours of surgery, Nikolai's legs and Nathan's arm were replaced with machines. Nikolai's general entered the medical bay and awaited his next order. General Evan Piper, I am ordering you to hunt down Delta Force with no end. I want you to find out where they are headed and chase them down to the death, said Nikolai, recovering from the duel, duel with Toa Ray Williams. Toa Ray Williams finished his teleportation from the planet Dismander to the planet Troy Idad. Ray watched as the core ship crashed into the planet and the humans inside be eaten by T-Rexes and raptors. Once the monsters left the smashed and ripped into ship, Ray traveled inside of the vessel and looked to see the name of the ship on several wooden boxes, the Red Moth. Ray opened a box with a ruby labeling and removed a bright ruby. Ray placed a piece of paper inside of the ship in a certain area and teleported to the planet Thin Line. The note Toa Ray Williams left behind was the following. For those seeking a ruby, come to Thin Line in Sector 2 to claim it. The caller, Toa. And that's going to do it for me, guys. I'm going to end this video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will uh, be back with the next part, and we'll be picking up at Chapter 3, March of the Droids, on page 40. You guys all have an amazing day. 